This episode is brought to you by LifeLock. Cybersecurity Awareness Month is still going strong, and LifeLock is here with a message about phishing, the scam cyber criminals use to trick victims into allowing access to their devices so they can steal their personal info. Being aware of phishing scams is one way to help protect yourself. For comprehensive identity theft protection, there's LifeLock. Start protecting your identity today with a 30-day free trial at lifelock.com slash podcast. Today on CityCast Boise. From corn mazes to apple orchards and pumpkin picking, we're breaking down the best fall festivities in the Treasure Valley that you need to check off your bucket list. Plus, we'll be sharing some of our favorite seasonal goodies and where to find them. It's Thursday, October 17th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Joining me today is Katie Williams, a.k.a. Traveling Spud. Great to have you on again, Katie. Hi, thanks so much for having me. So the Treasure Valley goes really hard when it comes to our fall-themed activities, and they're really popular. People are really enthusiastic about the festivals and activities. I'm seeing it all over everyone's social media. So what is it about these fall activities that makes them so popular? First of all, I think it's changing of the season and just getting out from our really hot, hot summer into much more cool vibes and all the beautiful fall leaves coming in. I personally, it's my favorite season. I love to kind of spend some cozy time inside, some cozy time outside. There's so much to do, but eating the good food, drinking the good drinks. Um, And I actually also looked up that autumn is traditionally the time that people celebrate harvesting of the crops, which I guess I knew that, but that's why it's kind of like such a popular time to go to different farms and stuff because like grapes are being harvested, pumpkins, squash, all sorts of stuff. So that's why people are really getting outside more. I think that's just kind of a tradition that's followed throughout. So now they're festivals and I love it. It definitely feels like more of a communal time than maybe some other seasons where, you know, you get out with your friends, with the community, you're going to all of these festivals. It does just feel more like a festival time of year. So what are the fall activities that you love to do to get in the fall mood or bring on these fall vibes? I love going apple picking. That's kind of my main thing I love to do every season. And you can bring them home and make all sorts of stuff like cider and breads and stuff like that. Yeah. What what apple orchards are you going to? Where have you had a really good time picking apples? Some of the really good ones are Caballo's Orchard and Gardens. That's in CUNA. There's Tyler's Rocky Point Orchard in Emmett. Uh, There's Williams Fruit Ranch, also in Emmett, and then Anderson Apple Ranch in Emmett and Kelly Orchard in Weezer. I haven't been to all these, but I've been to the top three and love them. I want to keep experiencing more because there's quite a few. When you go out apple picking, is does it end up being kind of an all day thing or is that something you can kind of go pick for an hour or two, go home? What what kind of time frame is that when you're planning on doing that? Yeah, you can definitely just go for a couple hours and then come home. It's very quick and easy, but it's just, it's fun because you actually get to like pick them from the trees and stuff. Yeah. And then you get to go home and make all kinds of delicious, cozy food. Exactly. So one of the things that I always plan on doing, and and you brought this up, is going to a pumpkin patch. And I always try to get my pumpkins before they're too picked over. um, So you don't have to like pick amongst the ones where you're like, oh, everybody got the good ones already. So what are some of the best pumpkin patches or spots around Boise that people should check out if they're thinking about getting their pumpkins right now? So we have quite a few different patches. Some of them are like a full fall festival vibe. And then there's other pumpkin patches that are smaller and just like all they have is really pumpkins and maybe some like other foods that you can get. But the most popular one I'd say is Low Family Farmstead just because it's huge. Um, And that's in CUNA. And they do all sorts of stuff. So it's like hay rides, pumpkin patch, corn maze, all sorts of that kind of stuff. So if you want food and you want the full immersion experience, that's a great one. Uh, Pumpkin Palooza is another great one. That's in Meridian. They also have a ton of experiences like even axe throwing and bull riding and all sorts of stuff. Um, And then there's Shindig Farms, which they actually, instead of a corn maze, they do a straw maze, but they have like 
tons of pumpkins and you can do wagon hay rides and stuff like that. Okay, I was really curious. Have you seen, because I haven't seen this before, this seems like it's new this year, um, but I've seen spots, you know, driving in different parts of Boise, Meridian, Nampa, where in just like a field, a field that's been harvested, there is just this little like impromptu pumpkin patch where there are just all these pumpkins on like hay bales and you just like scan the QR code and can buy pumpkins and just take them home. Whoa, I haven't seen that. That's cool. Yeah, there's one sort of near my house and I went over and actually they had like a great price and they keep like restocking it with pumpkins. It's kind of a just like any time of day, come grab whatever pumpkins you want. Is it manned by someone? Or no, it's, just, it's oh. just a QR code and trust, I guess. But it feels like a very 2024 pumpkin patch kind of situation. I like that idea. That's cool. Especially you just like want to get pumpkins and you don't want to deal with all the other stuff. That's a great way to do it. Yes. No, it was for I, I this year. I was like, no, I'm really in that mood. I'm just I'm here for my pumpkins. You don't have to talk to anyone. I'm yes. like, is this what the pandemic brought for us? Like yes. I can get pumpkins. I don't have to talk to anybody. I love that. <laughs> So another classic fall activity is going to a corn maze. And there are lots of corn mazes around the valley. Where, where in your opinion, are the best local corn mazes? So again, I'm going to tout the Low Family Farmstead because this one has been coined Idaho's original corn maze and it's won awards. They go to town. It's massive. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't want to tackle the whole thing, they also have a mini maze. So that's great if you have kids and you don't want to like spend hours and hours in this corn maze. Um, And then Shindig Farms, like I said before, they have a straw maze and it's got eight foot walls. So it's like a corn maze, but it's with hay bales. And it can take you anywhere from like 45 to like 90 minutes to finish it. That's a really popular one. And then Cherry Hill Farms also has an eight acre corn maze with different maze paths and all that good stuff. So we have quite a few. There are quite a few and they're all really different, different vibes, a whole different thing. My my tip, if you do want to take your kids to the Lowe's Farmstead and you do want to like really do the corn maze with them, buy them the bucket of cookies. There you go. They they will follow you for hours <laughs> if you have a bucket of cookies. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm really curious, Katie, are you more of a daytime corn maze person or a nighttime corn maze person? That's a great question. I am more of a right before it gets dark kind of person. Ooh. Like I like to be done when it gets dark because I personally am not a huge spooky type of gal. I get very scared. So I grew up in Twin Falls and there was one we'd used to go to. And I'd get kind of nervous when the chainsaw people would come out and chase me. So I have bad memories of that. <laughs> I can imagine. No, it does get it gets much spookier at night. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I, I grew up in eastern Idaho and there's a major difference between a daytime corn maze and a nighttime corn maze. There is. <laughs> Way different. <laughs> Do you know if any of the local corn mazes, speaking of spooky, are doing a haunted maze this year? Yeah. Shindig Farms actually does a haunted straw maze and it's on Saturday nights. I think it's, I believe it starts at 8 p.m. And then the last tickets are sold at 1030. This is the one in Nampa. So you can go get spooked. Yeah. And those can be really scary because it's also a maze. So you can only sort of run. Exactly. You're kind of stuck. So for people who like to be spooked, it is very spooky. Oh, it's such a clutch off-season pickup, Dave. I was worried we'd bring back the same team. I meant those blackout motorized shades. Blinds.com made it crazy affordable to replace our old blinds. Hard to install? No, it's easy. I installed these and then got some from my mom. She talked to a design consultant for free and scheduled a professional measure and install. Hall of Fame son? They're the number one online retailer of custom window coverings in the world. Blinds.com is the GOAT! Shop Blinds.com right now and get up to 40% off select styles. Rules and restrictions may apply. With ring cameras and doorbells, it's easy to keep every fright in sight. See who's there. Keep your scaredy cats company. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. I'll be home soon. And protect your crypt from the real monsters. Oh, come on. The sign says take one. Find dead simple ways to stay connected right now at ring.com. 
Katie, we've kind of already touched on this, but there are several sites around the Treasure Valley that people can visit to get more of an all-in-one harvest fall experience. So, you know, you don't have to go to different sites to get different things. They kind of try to do it all for you so you can just do it all at once. Which which location is your favorite and why? <sighs> I would probably, I've said this one a lot, but I'd probably say the Low Family Farmstead, mainly just because it's good for all ages they have everything from the pumpkin, the hayride, the corn maze to you pick flower farm. They have everything. They have food and you can just and alcohol and you can kind of just spend the whole act, evening there. So I think that one's probably my favorite. I've been on a few dates. I've been with friends. And then obviously there's lots of families there. So I'd say that one. And then second would probably be Shindig Farms on my list. So both are great if you just want a full-blown experience. And a bonus of those that you mentioned is there's food, there's drinks, there's alcohol. What what fall foods are you getting at the Farmstead or Shindig Farms? Ooh, I really love the apple cider donuts. I just feel like that's a classic fall thing to get. At Low Family, they actually have corn on the cob, which is really good. And they do the ice cream potato, which is if you haven't had it yet, got to try that. And they also have smoked turkey legs, which I haven't tried, but I've seen people just eating them. It's almost like you're at Disneyland with eating those things. So there's a lot of like fun kind of novelty foods to get. There are. Yeah, we've I've gotten the turkey leg before with my family. It can feed a family of five. Okay. Good <laughs> it's <to know>. large. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> okay. Switching gears a little bit. What are maybe some fall festivals or harvest theme festivals that people should check out or should be on their radar? So in terms of kind of like fall festivals, Idaho Botanical Gardens always has some really fun stuff going on in the fall. They do stuff every season, but they have harvest days all of October. They do stuff like costume parades, square dancing. They have artist markets. So that's a fun one to go to to just like check out if you're feeling in the fall spirit. It's good for kids as well. And then... um Another really cool thing, which I can want to do, this is like high on my list, is it's called Squawky and Spirits. And this is at the old Idaho Penitentiary. And they have actually like a Halloween night, two, two nights on October 25th and 26th. It's like a Halloween bash. And you can basically explore the Idaho State Penitentiary. They have music and food trucks and alcohol. And then they do different spooky history presentations. And you can kind of go see like different cell blocks of how they've, they some, some of the cell blocks they say are haunted. And so they'll kind of like do little showcases of that. And I would love to do that. That's high on my list. Ooh, that, yeah, that sounds like a really good time. Yeah, it does. Do you know, are there tickets still available for that? Yeah, I just looked. There are tickets. They're $30 and the, the event 7 to 11 p.m. And do you know of any other spooky or festive events that people should check out or definitely you're putting on your calendar? I would say the Boise Trolley Tours. They do an, a nightly trolley tour in the fall and they take you all around Boise and talk to you about different haunted things that have happened, different places that might be spooky or haunted. And, ex and there's an expert that actually comes on the trolley with you. It's like a 75, 85 minute ride and they'll tell you all about the most haunted locations in Boise. I think that is really cool. Like if you want just like kind of a spooky thing, but it's not super scary. Perfect. Yeah. Kind of for, you know, you know, for us that get scared easily, we can feel scared, but in the safety of a trolley. Yes, exactly. I think it sounds fun. And then the other one I was going to say is Witches Night Out, which is actually at the village at Meridian. It's a Women's and Children's Alliance fundraiser. And there's tons of different events, but everyone dresses up like a witch. And then there's contests and awards and stuff like that. I would say, and I love it's dual purpose. It's a little spooky, a little bit of a night out, but you're also helping great causes. Exactly. Are there any other fall or Halloween activities that are going on around the Treasure Valley that people may not know about, but that, you know, they should be knowing about because they'll be great? Yeah, I think one thing that gets kind of overlooked is the you pick flower farms around the Treasure Valley. There's quite a few and they're wonderful and they also have pumpkins. So at least a few of them do, but you can get some gorgeous 
flowers and that you can pick for the fall. Um, my favorite, couple favorites are Lovely Hollow Farms. That's in Caldwell. And they actually do have a little pumpkin section as well. But you can go, you can pick your bucket of flowers, then you can have fall fresh flowers. And it's just a nice way to get outside in the crisp air and stuff. Yeah. Um, Blue Sky Farm, in, that's in Eagle. Oh, and then there's another one, Hidden Hollow Farms, that's in Caldwell. So there's quite a few you pick flower farms and the flowers they grow are like massive dinner plate dahlias and all sorts of different stuff. Another one I have is going to a fall centric like movie because I'm always into watching movies in the fall because there's so many good classics. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptian theater, it's the our iconic theater downtown. They typically do a slew of different fall centric movies. And so you can check them out on their schedule. But them and then the flicks downtown also, they do different kind of, it's, that's the kind of more of the indie theater that serves food. They also do different fall movies. And then Voodoo Cellar, every Tuesday night at 8 p.m., they do like a Terror Tuesday. So you can go watch um, whatever classic film that they, or usually it's a classic horror film that they choose. Okay, Katie, anything else that is a must-do activity on your fall bucket list? I would say... My last thing would probably be going to our season and taste cooking school and doing a fall cooking class. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, they do themes for all the different seasons and they're doing like Oktoberfest theme. They have like different pies that you can learn how to make. And I just think that would be a fun little date night or going out with your friends or family or whatever. I think that'd be a fun way to just learn a new skill while you're also making something yummy. Yeah, I've been there before. They do a fantastic job, but I didn't, you know, it wasn't on my radar as like a fall activity, but that would be really fun. Yeah, it'd be kind of cozy and good way to get out of the house. And you get food. Exactly. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me. This is a fantastic list of things that people should check out, things I hadn't even thought about that are great fall activities. Yay. I'm glad. Thanks for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, you should subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter for even more fall activities. We'll be back tomorrow morning with our Friday News Roundup. You won't want to miss it.